hellhole of software engineers. I said it in the past, but like, you are not paid to create, you are paid to resolve issues. Coding and it will work, well, this bug or feature wouldn't need to be coded in the first place, right? This was one of the huge new processes that I had to face in the software corporate world. And it just goes to show how little you know about actual software development. Hello everyone, my last video generated a little bit of movement. It was a slower, sitting down and talk type of content, talking about some of my experience as a software engineer. And if you did not see it, I would highly suggest you to do so. And what I liked about this one was not really the video itself, but the amount of conversation it generated in the comments. And I realized that there is sort of a value of me talking about my experience as a new professional in the software engineering industry. And so today we're going to answer a question that I get asked from time to time, and that I also just asked myself when I was just starting out in my studying career. And so with that said, what do software developers actually do? Quick side note, on average, around 90% of you are not subscribed. So if that's not the case, I would highly suggest you to do so. What you do on the day-to-day -day as a software engineer obviously would greatly vary from one industry to another, what technology you use, what's the goal of that project, and so on and so forth. The only thing I can actually talk about with confidence is my professional experience. I am a full-stack software engineer, mainly working with web technologies, with languages that vary from JavaScript, TypeScript, CSS, all the way to Python. The way a company works usually follows a particular framework. I'm pretty sure you heard that word before, for agile software development. And these are essentially frameworks to allow you to make progress as a team. Obviously, not every single company is going to follow these frameworks, but these are huge classics, with the two most well-known that are Kanban and Scrum. According to where you are, maybe this pronunciation is not the best. And you can definitely tell me if I'm wrong, but at the end of the day, this is just the mix. Have a first discussion about what needs to be done, make it a task, decompose it if needed into different subtasks, assign them to people, and let them work on their shit. This is essentially the big classic. And so these tasks, will usually be handled by your PM, your product manager. And these will usually be listed in a particular task manager. Those are the biggest two right there, GitHub and Jira. Jira being notoriously known to be the hellhole of software engineers. Jira, if you're looking for a sponsor, you're looking at the right guy. But yeah, essentially this is where you will find all of the information you need about what needs to be worked on, what are the priorities, how difficult this or that task is, usually called tickets. And that's essentially your source of truth of what work actually needs to be done. And once you know where to do and how to do it, this is when you actually get to coding, the exciting part of the job, what you were paid to do, right? Well, not that much. Those tickets I just told you about, there are multiple types of those. According to what you do, if you work on an old product, for example, that was on the market for a while, you might do a lot of debugging, which is something I actually did a lot. And debugging doesn't necessarily mean like sitting down and write a bunch of code until something works. No, no, no. I would say like 80% of it is actually trying to find where the problem is and finally fixing it. This was actually a big surprise for me to enter this industry. I said it in the past, but like, you are not paid to create, you are paid to resolve issues. And that being either for debugging or actually creating a feature. This is where actually you would write some code. Like, the need is not to code. The need is to come up with the solution that the feature is asking for. We had this conversation not that long ago with one of my colleagues, and there is actually two school of thoughts when it comes to actually sitting down and write the code. Either trial and error, either to QA, quality insurance, or just tests, or sitting down down, take the time you need and come up with a plan before jumping on code. My very humble opinion, being very, very new to all of this, all of this being the coding corporate world, I think it's a little bit of both, right? You obviously know where you need to go, try to make minimal amounts of research of how to do it, and then finally jump in and try stuff out. If it was as easy as just coding and it will work, well, this bug or feature wouldn't need to be coded in the first place, right? When I say bug, I mean debugging it, but you got the point, right? And so, yeah, you get to code coding until you finally have something that works, you create your pull requests, you push that code to a code base, most certainly, most usually a GitHub repo, and you create your PRs. This is a bunch of software engineering jargon. To try to make it short, as easy as possible, you are never going to code on the, we're going to call it main code base. This is going to be a very, very sloppy analogy. I'm sorry in advance. Senior developers, if you want to shit on me in the comments, you can. But essentially how it works is that you make a copy of an entire code base on your system. You work on it as much as you want because this is not touching the actual code that is live somewhere until it works on your machine, you push it somewhere, and then you ask someone, hey, this is the new thing I want to add to the code base. Would you please review it, test it, do whatever you want before we actually merge it onto the production code? Well, this review process, this is what a PR is. It is a pull request. And I think, well, maybe you actually already did if you were a madman during that time, pull request and all of that, and just reviews in general, is something that I wasn't taught in engineering school. Like all of this process of going through code, how to read 
it, understanding how just to communicate between one engineer to another in a technical conversation, this was one of the huge new processes that I had to face in the software corporate world. And it is super interesting. In the very beginning, I don't know if I was the only one, but having your code reviewed like that by someone else at this very atomic level, because you will rarely push like 30 plus files in one time, right? Well, apart when you work on a feature, this happened in the past, but like you push such few code that is very easy to just read it in maybe 10 minutes. And you have to accept that someone obviously way better than you is going to view it, read it and judge it on the spot. So in the beginning, this was really hard to accept because very obviously you make mistakes. You know that you lack knowledge to make this or that faster. And it is just quite rough on the moral. But once you get past this wall, this is where you actually learn stuff. As a junior, you are here to make mistakes. You are here to learn. You are here to get faster at your craft that will then later actually benefit the actual company. So yeah, this is a very interesting bit. Now, how you work with this or that particular repo, branches, PRs, how do you review it? Then like, do you need to merge it, this, that, whatever. Just like the Scrum and Kanban method of the Agile, you have multiple ways of working out with repos. Git flow is a very well-known one based off just branches merging into remerging. Rebasing and squashing is another one. There are just so many ways to work with code. And this was another thing like coding itself is huge and is vast. Coding management and project management in general, this is even bigger and you just go to show how little you know about actual software development, what goes into creating something big with multiple people, with an organization. And so these few processes that I just talked about, this is just maybe a tenth of what was new to me when I joined. And this list is just even getting bigger. So all of that and like, you know, I know, we all know, sometimes when you want to work on a problem, you're just blocked. You cannot advance anymore. So what do you do? You just blocked and you stay on that task for, I don't know how many days or weeks. Well, this is what stand-up is for. Stand-up being like for a lot of software engineer is a waste of time. This is just the moment when you can sit down, have a conversation with your coworkers and knowing who is working on what. There obviously is this feeling constantly that like this is just losing time and getting you out of your workflow, but also it's just the best way to get the conversation going between your colleagues and unblocking you if you need anything. A stand-up is usually just that. What did you work on yesterday? What are you planning to work on? Do you have any blockers? It's supposed to be a tiny little conversation that can allow you to make the development go faster. So there you go. This was an overview. Well, an over, over, over overview of what a usual day looks like to me at least as a junior slash mid software engineer. In conclusion, I, I have a lot to learn. That's for sure. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to share your experience, obviously putting it down in the comment will serve someone. And it's always nice to see these kinds of conversation down there. Like the video, subscribe, edge this YouTube algorithm that we love so much. And apart from that, I see you all soon on the internet. Bye bye everyone.